start now okay thanks so very good morning to one and all present here first of all i request all the non speakers to keep their mic on mute and let the speaker complete the session and we will have a separate question and answer round at last so i abhishek sharma on behalf of choudhary charan singh national institute of agriculture marketing jaipur welcomes you all to the kisan mitra webinar series on agriculture technology for marketing organized by national institute of agriculture marketing in partnership with office of principal scientific advisor government of india so niam jaipur is an autonomous organization established under ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare government of india to cater various agriculture related aspects such as training research consultancy education and agriculture marketing ccs niam is also recognized as as the center of excellence in southeast asia so kisan mit friends of farmers is an initiative by principal scientific advisor office in partnership with national institute of agriculture marketing jaipur the objective of the initiative is to bring technologies to farmers and reverse migrants who have moved rural due to the impact of covid 19 so under this initiative more than 1000 technologies have been identified which are supported by icr institutions nabard ministry of rural development isro and gates foundation on the supply side of the technology there are innovators entrepreneurs researchers in academic and research institutions talking about their technology and webinar participants being on the demand side who are typically agri business enthusiasts government functionaries agri business companies and other agri business stakeholders who are keen in agri technologies so moving further i would like to introduce our today's speaker hanish and sonam who are the co-founders at himalayan hemp industries private limited kutch gujarat so hanish and sonam started himalayan hemp with a vision to create eco conscious products while empowering farmers and financially struggling communities like farmers and artisans so hanish is an engineer and ghost writer from himachal pradesh who worked for 5 years in oil and gas and technology uh, textile industry before shifting to uh, agri entrepreneurship he belongs to a farmer and teacher's family and his aspirations are to make a better world by mutual cooperation on the other hand sonam is an engineer and choreographer from gujarat who worked in oil and gas for 4 years and is also now working for making products like sanitary pads for women since himalayan hemp is a social enterprise they this is there is they are working on a cooperative model and they will explain which they will explain in the presentation while using cannabis hemp as a major raw material source they have recently did a crowdfunding campaign on cato for providing 3000 reusable hemp sanitary pads for improvised women in tamil nadu for, for imprisoned women in tamil nadu they have also come up with two products so far as reusable himalayan hemp sanitary napkin and reusable n95 hemp mask called canspirator now i would like to uh, invite hanish and sonam to take a session on novel technology innovations with cannabis hemp fiber products over to hanish and sonam uh hello everyone thank you abhishek sir for introducing us and uh, giving us this platform to represent our uh, company and talk about what we are doing in this uh, time so uh, without taking much time i'll start the presentation uh, i will share my screen now uh, just a minute yeah okay so uh, uh, to start with uh, this presentation is about novel technology innovations using cannabis hemp fiber products so today we are going to focus on the fiber fiber that you can see here with me we are going to talk about this and the various applications that it has so to start with we are himalayan hemp we are a socio ecological community to empower farmers and bring eco conscious products to the world uh, this is Uh, just a demonstration of our first product uh, we also applied for hilda jackson award where we were in the top 10 last year and uh, we are present right now in himachal pradesh uttarakhand and gujarat we also uh, are in maharashtra right now and this is the presentation by me and sonam soda who are the co-founders and directors of himalayan hemp industries private limited now uh, coming forward to give you a brief co company info uh, our name is uh, himalayan hemp industries private limited we were registered on 28th of november 2019 so we are a startup uh, we are also registered on startup india with this as a dipp number 
we also incubated from national institute of agriculture marketing on 19th of february 2020 so we are an alumni from the same college and that college is giving us this platform to speak about our uh, company here today and uh, we both are the key people in this organization and uh, our achievements are uh, we have developed world's first reusable hemp uh, sanitary pads and the first n95 approved hemp uh, respirator mask as well uh, and the respirator mask we have made in a joint venture with avega green technologies and small spark concept which are two companies from maharashtra now um, our vision and mission so vision basically we want to preserve the indigenous himalayan hemp plants like whatever fibrous plants we get in the himalayan region they are quite exotic and indigenous to the nature but it is slowly fading and that is why we want to preserve it by bringing it forward for with its applications and uh, we also want to preserve the indigenous himalayan hemp communities that means the people who are involved as artisans into making products and harvesting and cultivation farmers basically so we have to preserve those communities and those practices and that is our way to strengthen the minority communities so that we can make products uh, focused on those communities and the our mission is to make farmers the front runners of this country because that is what it should be and uh, we also want to voice the issues and provide solutions for suffering communities that is why we have products like uh, sanitary pads second is mask and uh, to create a fair economic model for all cooperative members which is the model we will talk about uh, in the future uh, in this presentation later and we also want to create a strong supply chain and network in the world of hemp which is also lacking right now uh, so first of all what is cannabis hemp to uh, to give you a brief about this plant it is an industrial variant of cannabis plant that means the ganja that you see around uh, it is an industrial variant to that that means it has a lower thc percentage and it it is it will be used for majorly for fiber purposes uh, so it is one of the earliest crops cultivated by humans uh, it has highest cellulose content it has highest biomass per acre uh, it has the most nutritious seeds and it does it is a miraculous medicinal plant so we will uh, cover all these points also in later on this is just a picture of uh, a local cannabis plant growing around us so you see the stem part in between that is what we are going to use which doesn't have any psychoactive property if you process it properly uh, these are some of the parts of uh, like this is uh, when you uh, take a stem of a plant if you cut it from the middle that is how you can see the cross section so the inner part is called as herd and the outer part is called as the fiber and fiber is basically for making these textile purposes and all these things and herd is for building purposes and uh, uh, in the side this is the herds like when uh, the this uh, stock is dried and is broken down into pieces this is what we get and this is used for building material and uh, this is the seeds which are highly nutritious these are the three varieties of uh, cannabis plant uh, today we are talking about sativa l which is the uh, less psychoactive version of cannabis plant and this is a basic picture of the plant now these are the modern day uses for hemp uh, like uh, there is this it's used in terms of fiber it's used in terms of the pulp it's used in terms of the medicine and also the oil so these are the multitude of the products which are possible from hemp and today we are just going to talk about two of them to show you so that you can understand its uh, potential as a plant so in himalayan hemp we want to focus on applications first of all the fiber board so uh, we also have a society in place where we conduct research for making these products and uh, there are many uh, like uh, i mentioned avega green before so uh, they are also a part of our society so we are all are working on these products eventually so hemp fiber board is the product then hemp paper is the second application that we want to get into this is all possible by fiber third is hemp textile so these uh, applications then fourth is biofuel which is already made by our partner organization avega green technologies they have made the biofuel as well which is a patented technology this is the biofuel uh, this is just a normal internet picture then hemp bioplastic which is uh, going to replace the plastic that we are using these days uh, it's a non woven technology has also been uh, in practice uh, by our partner organization again then hemp bio cement which has been used by other startups in the 
country then hemp graphene which is also going to be for the solar energy uh, alternatives this is also one of the future uh, things we want to get into then uh, hemp foods so this is foods is a variety of things which are possible and seeds uh, as you know if we wash them properly if we extract oil from them properly then there won't be any thc in it so it can be used as a mustard oil as well like like for a normal application and then hemp medicines which are also possible with the oil and that is still under the consideration of the legalities whether we can produce it or not then hemp skin care products which are also again the by products of sorry the end products of the oil that we showed you before like oil cannot just be used for edible purposes but it also be used for making cosmetics so that is another application and there are 40990 more applications which are possible this is just to start with now uh, our uh, product categories are there and from here i'll give it to sonam soda our co founder and managing director she will talk about the product categories and she will also introduce you with the, our sanitary pads uh, over to you sonam yes uh, hello and uh, to slide 9 without breaking the link so as hanish mentioned in earlier slide there are 50000 different uses Uh, that's uh, to develop this product as least research and few are so are and if i spread them out it's five times i'm on and and the least of them with is in research and also time uh, so this hemp board and paper and textile bio, bio plastic bio and between food that is a quality and uh, bio so, okay. so, so Yes, Nina is environment as well as uh, simply reduce hemp's three three pets and that's photo. Can we have the photo? Well, Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. You continue. So and as well as the sanitary pad reusable that. And uh, how come up with the reusable uh, is there a cement six crore women in India in our country? This woman with a marriage of 247 years. Uh, these are further divided into two categories. Is the rural women a uh, hotel? to menstrual so 70% of women in india do not have access to safe and economical menstrual hygiene products and the other fact uh, that 30% of menstruating indian women rely on synthetic non biodegradable sanitary napkins it derives that 70% of women consider menstruation dirty, perpetuating a culture of shame and ignorance as so owning to poor menstrual hygiene. There are increase in incidence of infection and hormonal dysfunctions. 20% of girls are typically absent for school year due to lack of easy access to toilets. And in the second reason, 
the household work for girls to miss the school. You can see in the slide. Okay, so what are the problems that are faced? So as we discussed in previous slide, there are two categories of women in India and the product uh, they use during their periods. Unhygienic and synthetic pads are highly hazardous to our skin as well as to our health. Lack of menstrual awareness and the taboo related to menstruation is a big problem, which indirectly leads to poor menstrual hygiene. And the second problem is, so as we are witnessing ma major pandemic situation due to which many migrant workers have lost their daily income and many are farmers who are mainly dependent on the seasonal cash crop and which is not uh, sufficient for livelihood. And the third problem which we see is environment and environmental problems. The third huge problem in the West we produce by throwing our pads. More than 12 billion of these pads are discarded every year, which ends up polluting water and landfills by around 72,000 tons of plastic a year. So our first product targets to overcome these issues by uplifting women and uh, farmers through the means of hemp economy. Next slide, please. So, uh, that's uh, the photo we are using to promote. Yes. So let's discuss the solution for the problems we are facing. So the first solution for poor menstrual hygiene is providing women with better product like hemp sanitary reusable pads and also by conducting awareness campaigns in school and villages for eradicating menstrual taboos for safe and healthy menstruation. And the second, uh, hemp can be the alternative cash crop for the farmers as it requires less water, zero pesticides. And by developing innovative products like uh, reusable hemp sanitary pads, uh, which are essential, assembled and stitched by uh, this uh, woman, Lady Taylors. So, and the solution three is. A uh, solution to the waste we produce by dumping our sanitary pad, pads is uh, introducing reusability. For those who are still using unhygienic cloth pads and by developing disposable and uh, degradable sanitary pads for those using synthetic sanitary pads. So as a result, better solution to these issues and for a fair economic model, we have created a concept of Hemp family, uh, which is the backbone of our community where uh, men can cultivate the hemp crop and uh, farming while women of the uh, family can stitch these sanitary pads. Uh, that a self sustained process is created, which utilizes the skills of entire family uh, unit to generate uh, an income. So, yes. And uh, here we have shown the example of biodegradability test. Okay. Now a hemp for sanitary pads and how hemp can make a different com uh, difference compared to the other crops. So hemp fiber is strong fiber and so is best suited for its reusability. It's uh, rash resistant, UV resistant, antibacterial, antifungal, uh, Yes, anti-inflammatory and uh, better absorbency. Hemp fiber has all the qualities which is required in a sanitary pad and so is the best suited for the product that we are uh, developing. And this is the USP. You can see here are the sources proving the quality of hemp fiber. Uh, proof of USP, please next slide, please. Okay, from here, uh, I'll transfer this to Mr. Anish Katnavar. From here, he'll uh, guide you through. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sonam. Thank you for uh, talking about sanitary pads. I, I hope that you showed them the sanitary pad that we have. 
uh, I'll just show it. So these are the three. Uh, I can show the. This is the standard size of sanitary pad we uh, made right now. This is the one, and this is the other design. Uh, I hope you can see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is the other design which we are going to use after after pregnancy, after delivery. So women uh, tends to bleed much more than usual. So for them, we have created this design, uh, which is a little bit bigger in size. So for now, these are the two standard size we have uh, developed so far. Uh, reusable hand sanitary bags. Okay. Okay. Now over to you. Okay, all right. So uh, now moving on to the customer and market analysis. So we are following AIDA model through our website and social media. That means uh, awareness, intent, desire, and action. So uh, that is a best way to uh, create uh, awareness because we are talking about menstruation at one thing at one end, and we are talking about cannabis hemp on the other end. Both of the things are taboo. So it's better to create awareness and then uh, create. Uh, that is a better way to create a market. We also conduct stalls and campaigns in different colleges to make people aware about it. Then we also hire vloggers and even sometimes we ourselves in the team also do influencer videos and we also do cross promotional uh, blogs and all these things with fellow companies. We also organize events and seminars for bringing together the hemp enthusiasts. Uh, and then we also do cross promotional blogging. This is a sample poster of our uh, social media uh, awareness campaign that we are conducting. Now, uh, moving on, uh, now we have also assessed like how is the market going on for these uh, sanitary pads. First of all, there are imprisoned women. Uh, so they can be a part of our social enterprise where they don't pay us, but we can do it voluntarily from our side. And we are also looking forward for some um, uh, uh, NGOs or some even fabric manufacturing companies who want to uh, be a sponsor of this event that we are that we are doing, and we have export opportunities in countries like Sweden, Denmark, uh, Taiwan, and Malaysia. We also have some uh, enthusiasts around seventy orders we have through our social media marketing. There are teenagers and young girls from schools. Basically, if somebody has to be shifted to reusability, if they are taught them from the school itself, then they become a long time uh, 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 aware uh, users of this uh, reusable sanitary pads. A lot of the women that we interview these days who are in the age of 25, 30, they are not able to switch to reusability because they are, uh, they are sticking to the disposable ones right now and they are trained like that and they, it, is, it will be difficult for them to switch over to this. But there are many volunteers who are willing to do that. And uh, new mothers, of course, Sonam showed that big sanitary pad. So that is for their heavy flow and absorbency. And there are regular rural women. When we interview rural women, they are okay with reusability because they see it as uh, uh, like when the disposable sanitary pad is thrown out and it is taken out by the dogs and also they, they, uh, they don't consider it as good. So they are still okay with the reusable aspect of the sanitary pads, which is good. Now, uh, uh, our milestone so far, uh, we have prepared milestones for two quarters. So first of all, uh, we are working on completing our intellectual property protection. Like we have filed the patent for uh, this sanitary pad so that uh, we can protect it and nobody else can make it, which is very important from the IP point of view. Uh, then uh, we also in the second quarter, we want to work on the first line of manufacturing unit where we want to manufacture our 3000 sanitary pads and we have already started working upon it like uh, with the with the aim to make 24 pads in a day and uh, that is by one person so that is our target and uh, third milestone third quarter milestone is to build this model in terms of a scalable model where we can keep going to different villages and training them and they can keep uh, uh, making these stitching these sanitary pads for us so it will be a means of income for them and that is a way to rehabilitate villagers again in their homes rather than they leaving uh, as migrants to cities and working as workers over there so this is a better way and for one is so like uh, like th there is a vision to make a crime free and poverty free india 
and that can be done when every parallel is working together and that can be done after we scale up it scale it up properly and everything now uh, after talking about milestones next is the social impact that uh, we have think uh, we are thinking about it so there is a planned production of 20 lakh sanitary pads in next 5 years and we are looking forward to employ around 500 tailors that is a target of 5 years it is not much but we are not that big as a company to go very big this is how much a startup can think right now and this is very realistic and uh, if we have funding of course then uh, we can increase the number of production this is the economical uh, impact basically the tailors who will be working with us will be generating a total amount of 2 crores in last in next 5 years if we make 20 lakh sanitary pads and um, this is the price comparison where our sanitary pads right now is uh, one pack like of four will cost 600 rupees it is reusable like uh, you can use it for one year so that is your one year cost of 600 rupees and we also did a price comparison with the whisper choice disposable pad which is the least expensive form of the sanitary pad available in the market right now and that will also cost you 936 rupees per year so this is just a way to look at how we should utilize uh, the things that we are looking forward to and this is the environmental impact where if we uh, go for reusability then we are discarding 6 crore 64 lakh sanitary pads just with 20 lakh sanitary pads so this is the goal that we can achieve the wastage that much we can reduce this is around 170 tons of plastic biomedical waste which you are releasing every year so this is the environmental impact now competitive analysis for hemp there is nobody in india uh, who is making any hemp sanitary pads so far or who has even made uh, there are other uh, reusable sanitary pad makers like uh, Hede, Karmesi, Sati, Kofem, but they have, aren't using hemp in their sanitary pads. So that is what makes our USP uh, stronger. Uh, now, this is our another product that we have come up with, which is uh, the Canspirator mask. And uh, uh, for to talk about this, we have another, another person who will just spoke about, spoke, speak about this for just two minutes and explain about this mask. Uh, Karan, can you just uh, show them the mask and uh, tell them about it a little? Uh, I think... Thank you. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Karan, can, can you show them the mask and talk about it a bit? Yes. Uh, can you all see this? Is it? Yeah. 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 So this is a mask which is called as the Canspirator mask, world's first hemp respirator mask, certified by Atira, as well as uh, it is undergoing test for HN99 right now at uh, with the Ministry of Textiles in Mumbai. So Canspirator mask is world's first mask which has the properties of uh, it's a sustainable mask which uh, with the properties of washability. Uh, it is completely breathable, which has a breathing capacity of at least three liters of oxygen space between the mask. Plus, it is splash resistant, rash free, and it is the most important thing. It is sustainable uh, product. So mm -hmm. that's all. So it has been created uh, by venturing partner with Avega. Himalayan Hemp with their uh, immense uh, support and uh, experience with the hemp fabric and small spa concepts which uh, has special uh, material science uh, experience and uh, support that they have provided us. Yeah, and the most important thing, it, uh, this mask is engineered with the ionized air technology and the only mask to have this technology within it, which I, uh, creates negative ions to give better metabolism, uh, better immunity, and also reduce the um, uh, the content uh, that enters uh, like the coronavirus. It can avoid co coronavirus entering in the foreign bodies into your uh, lung system. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Karan, for uh, introducing. So this uh, mask is available on our website. You can go to himalanhem.in today. And uh, this is the price. We have kept it as 130 rupees, which means it is quite lower than the available N95 masks in the market. 
and uh, you can see it's a uh, so like this is a product that we have already launched with him and uh, so you can all just uh, check it out after this uh, is over now we'll talk about our uh, uh, cooperative model that uh, we have been developing and talking about so far so we have developed our organization in four parts first is based on cultivation and artisanry second is research and preservation third is implementation and fourth is governance so all these things are very important in a model now first cultivation and artisanry means we have uh, cooperative societies which are divided in two forms one is the farmer cooperative society who cultivate and uh, grow hemp fiber and all these things and second is industrial cooperative where you know who stitch the sanitary pads and stuff so they will be the cooperatives sahakarita jisko bolte hain they will be our first uh, 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 to point to start with and we will share 25% of the, uh, whatever we are earning with them now these percentages which i am mentioning these are very important for creating this entire ecosystem second is the research and preservation where we have a himalayan hemp research foundation in place and also a seed bank where 10% of the income from the companies will be going uh, now why seed bank because we want to preserve and we want to uh, give these these uh, ma uh, sorry these seeds to the farmers for very low cost so that they can afford it and uh, so we are not looking forward to patent the seeds but just to preserve them in a seed bank and the research foundation where we will come up with the different products like we came up with the sanitary pads and then uh, with masks and these kinds of products we will also venture into more products uh, in the future then third is the implementation where we are looking for two way implementation one is industrial at second is medicinal industrial means uh, we will be like a, mask and sanitary pad they are in the industrial section medicinal we are thinking as a not for profit entity where we will be treating uh, like say when somebody wants to uh, treat themselves they can come there and they can treat themselves by using and we want to uh, uh, go with the ayurveda uh, route of treating people where they can come in the nature and heal themselves uh, not just physically but mentally and spiritually as well so that is one way to look at it and final is governance where we have a non not for profit society in place which governs all these things together and uh, that is uh, like this uh, sanitary pads to imprison women that is the initiative which is taken up by the society together and then we are also looking forward to uh, come up with uh, like to be a part of the government also because government is required here for governing everything for regulating the plant and 10% uh, we are thinking maybe with good with the government this is the flow like uh, from uh, rom to the left as you see this is farmers and artisan the cooperative they will be giving the raw material to research foundation and also to the company and then you know research foundation and seed bank can exchange the seeds and everything so this is the flow like how it will be working and these are the monetary percentages that i have already mentioned uh, client will pay 100% 35% will be retained by the industry like our company then 10% uh, will be released in the research and 20% will be released in the regulation and the 25% will be going to the farmer so this is how we are uh, utilizing the 100% of the income this is how we are thinking now why cooperative society why this so it is a collection of farmers like when we are growing when we are cultivating in himalayan region so lands are not like in acres or anything like that so we can make a small group of farmers so their collected land can be used which also reduces the wastage now there are uh, all the small holdings of the farmers can be pulled in and that can be used for working the benefits of the large scale farming so this is basically to make small scale farmers come forward and make a large uh, structure then there will be monetary exchanges because we will be implementing digital transactions and this is a democratic system that means uh, there is a president and vice president in place and uh, they will be chosen by uh, election and everything will happen so that it doesn't become a one person entity it has to be a long term entity even after we die it should keep going on like this and there is a lack of government support for farmer awareness so cooperative societies can unite farmers and they can ask the government for support together rather than just one farmer asking them and then it also preserves the indigenous communities and their ways of living and its implementation in one state like we are starting with himachal and uttarakhand for now if they are successful over there this model then you know we can implement we are open to implement it in other states also like wherever you are from 
so this these are our divisions as we spoke before there is farmer cooperative there is artisans cooperative both are under the same umbrella but it is just the division in the farmer cooperative seeding harvesting and collection of raw material etc will be happening while in artisans stitching and making of handmade bag uh, will be happening this is blockchain in uh, cooperative we are looking forward to implement this as well so that you know we know that this farmer is from here he has this much uh, uh produce and uh, you know this is the inventory we can also control the seed quality we can take out the soil moisture data all these things are very important for a holistic ecosystem for the farmers now uh, this is avega uh, green tech i was just uh, going to introduce some of their products uh, i will introduce it because we have less time uh, uh, i have talked about this company before and karan uh, who talked about it is also the uh, director of this company so this is their products this is hemp biodiesel that they have made this is a turn this is a process patent right now uh, i'll quickly just scroll through them this is an exhaust muffler which can be added into your bike this is all also made by using hemp plant and uh, it also it, uh, from one report that we remember it releases oxygen into the atmosphere so this is a very innovative product this is also a process patent and design patent. Uh, this is eco ply that they have made, which is basically any kind of wooden flooring or, you know, the concept is to make uh, housing and be detached. And basically you can create your home, you can disassemble it, you can pack it in a truck and you can move to a new place and make your new home. This can be a new concept for the travelers who are coming up these days. And also these can be used as insulations in the inner uh, uh, walls. These are hemp eco bags. Avega Green Technologies recently also won a prize uh, of 3 lakh rupees from textile industry for these eco bags. These can replace the bags which are also in the market right now. They are The existing product is not biodegradable. This is a biodegradable bag. And they also believe in the green logistics. And this is their potential market. And this is their team. Uh, the, there are six people in their team. Karan is their co-founder um then you can contact them here now coming back to himalayan hemp this is our core team this is me sonam to the left and right sushant uh, to left bottom he is our main researcher uh, he is uh, right now working with the rural people in ladakh area so he is also a mountaineer as well this is our main we also make farmers as may as our core members so basically rekha das is our first farmer and this is our team so far this is a strong team of 27 people and uh, we uh, look forward to go ahead with this team and create a lot of other products which are possible with cannabis and fiber these are the bottlenecks we face uh, like permissions for collections of fibers and all these materials from the local state authorities this is a bit of a bottleneck uh, we wanted more streamlined uh, then there are lack of certified seeds which are uh, requiring research and there is lack of proper funding as always because these are all these all things require a lot of funding for sure and we are that is why we are starting a bit small and these are some of our community pictures while working and uh, these are more pictures and uh, so these are our uh, so social media handles you can find us on facebook instagram and youtube where we uh, create a lot of content and maybe you will find it more uh, interesting if you go through them so this is the end of presentation we are open for q and a thank you everyone thank you uh, hanish can you go back to your context slide which one context slide context slide yes just a minute uh, you mean to say core team yeah before that this one yeah the, yeah, this is the context slide of Avega Green Technologies, which is our partner organization. Okay. So, yeah. So, thank you, Anish and Sonam. Uh, now, I request all the participants to unmute and raise their questions one by one, or also you write your questions in the chat box. I have also provided the contact details of the speakers, Anish, uh, Sonam, uh, Karan, Karan Sasar, and one more. Uh, Sanket. Sanket. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you can take the details from there and you can contact them directly as well for any, uh, any, anything about their product, any query about their product. So I request all the participants to unmute and raise their questions. Yeah, Hanish, uh, I am uh, Ramakrishna here. Uh -huh. uh, I am the advisor to the Ministry of Petroleum and uh, Natural Gas. And I have also been an expert member on the, uh, you know, uh, working group on biofuels. 
So I have been uh, one of the architects of the biofuel policy in the country. So it's a wonderful presentation that you have made. And I would be very much uh, interested in uh, the uh, bioenergy potential of uh, the cannabis hemp. You know, right. I do have quite a few questions. Uh, I don't think I would like to use this forum. Um, I would like to be in touch with you and sure. really see how this can be scaled up. You know, as I see it, this is a kind of a crop, though it has a lot of controversies uh, surrounding this uh, particular crop. Uh, you know, I think we have to get over that and really look at how we can bring in the community participation here. As I see it, you know, it is not just a, a biofuel crop, but, you know, it can be, uh, you know, multi multiple products from uh, different parts of the plant can be produced. So this is a wonderful thing. So I would like to be in touch with you and uh, interact with you. You can just sir. note down my mail ID. It is ybramakrishna at gmail.com. Just a minute, sir. Can you can you say it again? Y B ybramakrishna at gmail.com. Ramakrishna at the red gmail dot. Single word. Oh, YB Ramakrishna. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, very, very nice presentation. Very nice. Uh, and you know, the, especially the work that you have been doing with the community is something that I would be very keen on. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, myself, Ajmal from Kerala. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, Ajmal. We can hear you. Yeah, your presentation was very nice. You were specifying everything. Very good. So I've been following you through your vlogs through Instagram and I've been reading all the stuff. Nice. So actually, is this a startup of uh, your own idea? Hello. Is this a startup? Uh, your question was unclear, Ajmal. Can you repeat your question again? Is your startup a... Was, uh, was this a startup uh, you started by your own idea? Yeah, yeah. We both, like uh, me and Sonam Soda, like my partner, we both started it while, while we were traveling in the mountains. And it all, like before Himalayan hemp, there was this idea of sanitary pads. So that is what Sonam, Sonam came up with that idea and we started working on it. And then uh, when we when it came to name it, so like uh, uh, we just named it because we wanted to preserve Himalayan hemp because Himalayan hemp is a strain which is not just industrial; it can be used for both the purposes, like for medicine as well as for the fiber. So we want to preserve this uh, particular strain. So that is why we named it as Himalayan hemp. Okay, and uh, the the reason why I ask because uh, when I'm in my college now, I'm studying in college. So I think about uh, some startups and all. So through you, the, through I saw your blog. So I think about uh, that. That's a good plan. So I want to know that actually you are presenting uh, the uh, the ideologies of uh, your startup or about a business sector like this. Uh, right now, what we talked about was our uh, startup, like this cooperative model and all these things. Uh, Obviously, we'll, uh, this is our startup's presentation, so we will present our startup only. But in between, I also presented Avega Green Technologies, which is our partner organization who have made biofuel and ecoply and all these things as well. We have made so far sanitary pads and uh, this, uh, sanit uh, this mask so far, which is in joint venture with Avega. So this is what we have made so far. And of course, the awareness part on blogs and blogs and all these things, as you say. Okay, thank you. So if you are studying in a college for your final year project, you can definitely approach us and we can do some project together maybe. Uh, let's see. We can stay connected. The, the contact details are also shared by Mr. Abhishek in this chat. Okay, thanks very much. Like, yeah. I, I'll see you uh, how many farmers have been uh, uh, you know, uh, cultivating this now on a regular basis? Uh, see, the cultivation so far hasn't been started, sir, properly. Like, if I have to tell you, why? Because there is policy in Uttarakhand and there is policy in UP. But the policy says that the genetics of the seed should be 0.3% THC. And so far, like, uh, due to the high nitrogen content in uh, Indian soil and due to proper monsoon and all that, so it is a good uh, uh, climate for THC. So THC uh, doesn't get controlled in less than 0.3% THC. So nobody is cultivating so far. Even the fiber that we are getting, either we get it for research purposes from Uttarakhand or we have to import it from Nepal or Europe or other countries. So we are not able to make use of the 
fiber which grows in india and we want to make use of it because it can give incomes to the farmers and stuff like that and we can make products like this so uh, so cultivation is not possible at the moment but we are doing the stitching part where uh, in uh, up we have two uh, groups where they are stitching the sanitary pads and that is also one way to generate money for these people so that is also so Hurdles that uh, there in uh, you know engaging the farmer in cultivation of this. This is something that you can uh, bring it up to me. The second okay. thing is that you know we are also looking at uh, this. I would assume that this is kind of a short gestation crop. It may take about four or five months before uh, it starts. Four or five months. Five months, I think. Five months it will take. So we can have okay. we can have so, two six. Uh, we are trying to do some uh, field trials with uh, five or six different uh, crops and cannabis hemp. Could be one of them. Okay. We're trying to do some trials, you know, it's controlled trials that we are going to be doing in okay. uh, Karnataka as well as in uh, uh, Andhra Pradesh, in Telangana. Definitely. So, uh, I would be in touch with you, and you know, if you can make available some of the seeds and also agronomic practices, and also getting involved in the, uh, you know, the raising this cultivation in the controlled uh, atmosphere, uh, right. would be wonderful. Yes, sir. Definitely, sir. So we will get in touch with you after this, and uh, let's take it forward and do something together. Sure, sure. Okay, sir. Thank you. Please, one more question: What is the price of that uh, sanitary pad? Both so sanitary. Yeah, yeah. So sanitary pad, uh, as uh, I mentioned, like six hundred rupees uh, is the price price of the one pack, which has four pads. So that means one pad is uh, one fifty rupees. But I'll also like to mention one more thing here. We can reduce this cost more because seventy-five percent of our cost is going to fabric and high uh, cost that we have to bear because we are importing the fiber from Nepal and all these countries. So if we have our fiber from our country and if we have our own fabric manufacturing unit, we can reduce the price by uh, I think sixty percent. So this is sanitary bed you are talking about. There is uh, a price a reusable sanitary bed. Yeah, yeah, reusable sanitary pad, six hundred rupees for one year, and that is also a very reasonable price and feasible. But we can still reduce it more. And what is the life of that product? Uh, life of that product, like uh, for example, Sonam right now, she is using for last seven months, uh, and it is still going on, uh, like as a human trial. Uh, but it has a. a it, the same pad will be reusable for seven months. So far, like practically speaking, like uh, we were incubated in Niam, so that time we got it validated, and after that, Sonam has been using it. So it is a period of seven months. So it's an ongoing trial, still going on, and uh, but we have estimated it can go for around two years if we wash it properly, and uh, like uh, if we consider like where you can where it is written or where you can uh, justify that this is the basically the life of that product. any kind of research or any kind of uh, certificate from the government or a private body who can certify the life of that product uh, uh, we we haven't uh, uh, done yet so we will do it thank you for this suggestion because what we have done so far is we have got it validated as per the indian standard so it is ready to launch in the market but we'll consider this suggestion and i think this is really great thank you abhishek sir for this suggestion so one more question that how you like with this cost as you said that you are likely to uh, reduce the cost as well uh, like uh, about the fiber you are importing it from nepal and now you will be uh, put uh, you are getting this in india then it will be more cheaper but how you penetrate with this amount in uh, like rest of in, like rural india like with this price uh, is it feasible have you tried yes uh, like uh, i come from a village so this time when we were locked down so i spoke to the local women in my area and they were like okay with this price and uh, they said like for one year if it is this price then this is okay but as a one time product it is uh, maybe not okay in in interestingly in the urban areas when we talk to the women they were ready to buy it every month also even though it's reusable they were saying that we will use it and will because they can afford it but in rural areas because our focus is on the rural areas that's why i mentioned that we have to get the fiber from india and we have to have our own manufacturing unit so that we can also make it affordable for rural areas properly okay yeah any other questions from the participants anish sir can i get the contact number 
Yeah, I think it's mentioned by uh, Mr. Abhishek in the chat. Everything is there. Email IDs, phone numbers, everything. Where are you Any working? Uh -huh. You were saying? Now where you are working? No, right now we are in Himachal only. We are not... Uh, we went to Uttarakhand recently after the lockdown opened. And uh, Sanket Jain and uh, Karan Sasar who are also uh, in this presentation. Uh, Sanket Jain is our first uh, farmer in Uttarakhand chapter that we want to start with. He is also in this presentation right now. And uh, like uh, he is the help that we have been having, you know, if we need fiber or seeds for any kind of experimentation. So he has contacts in the farmers in Uttarakhand. And so we get it for research purposes from him. And Karan Sar is uh, also here, uh, who, whose contact number details are also given. He's into biofuel and bioplastics and all these things as well. But we are a partner organization, so we uh, work together. And uh, this is the uh, motive for cooperative model also. Like cannabis hemp industry, if it has to make an impact right now, so they, people have to come together and they have to unite and they have to do things. That is how we will be able to make an impact. So um, that is the input from my side. So one more thing, like if I want to buy this product, so I should go to your website or uh, is it uh, available somewhere else also like on Amazon or somewhere? Uh, no, no, it's available on the website. I mean, uh, if I have to, I'm just going to share my screen one more time. So this is the screen that you see. This is our website. So you can buy it available. So this is just mask. One set of five, set of 10, set of 100. If you uh, go for set of five, price will become 125 and stuff like that. And we also have a distribution model. Like uh, if anybody wants to become a distributor in one area mask, for this mask. This is, the, this is about mask. You are mask, saying. mask. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, sanitary pads? Sanitary pads is under patenting at the moment. So okay. they will be released after two months. We will also release them. So that is, uh, for that protection is better first. Because uh, we have a different vision to go for. So, yeah. Thank you. So, if any other questions, or we will close the session. So, thank you, Hanish and Sonam, for the presentation. Uh, like, once again, I thank you for sharing your invaluable experience in agriculture technology. Participants are really uh, got benefited from your talk. And at last, I would like to thank everyone for sparing the time, valuable time with us. Our next webinar will be on Thursday, 24th of September, 2020. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Niam, for this platform one more time.